Hi friends, I welcome you all in this exciting training session being conducted by TNV Academy. Let me explain to you that what we will be covering in this session. In today's session, we will be covering the clause 8.5 control of production and service provision. And this comes under the main clause 8 which is operation. The clause 8 signifies the do part of the plan, do, check, act, PDCA cycle. Now let us understand about the internal references taken by clause 8.5 of ISO 9001-2015. As far as this clause is concerned, this takes reference from ISO 9000-2015 which is terms and definitions. ISO 9000-2015 standard spells out the terms and definitions used in this international standard so that no misinterpretation is done while implementing the requirements of ISO 9001-2015. Now let me tell you what are all the key takeaways learnings from this session. At the end of this session, you will be able to understand the difference between identification and traceability and what are the requirements as per ISO 9001-2015 pertaining to identification and traceability, how to control the property belonging to customers, external providers, how to preserve the outputs to ensure conformity to requirements. So let's begin our discussion regarding class 8.5.2 identification and traceability. What is identification? Using of suitable means to identify outputs when it is necessary to ensure the conformity of products and services. Identifying the status of outputs with respect to monitoring and measuring requirements throughout the production and service provision. For example, the type of product and inspection status is identified clearly as name of the part, OK, not OK, rejected, under inspection, etc. etc. What is traceability? This is the way of unique identification of the outputs where it is a requirement for tracking the raw materials and other parts used in the manufacturing of the output. In industries such as food, aerospace, automotive industries, they require the ability to have specific identification of items and the ability to trace the elemental parts that make up the items. This is normally used when there is a failure of an internal component and you want to know what other items contain components from the same batch of parts. This will help in product recall from the market where only limited number of vehicles or parts from the suspect lot of production can be recalled for rectification and repairs. Now let us discuss the clause 8.5.3 property belonging to customer as well as external provider. Organization need to handle with care the property belonging to customers and external providers, suppliers, vendors, while it is in the control of the organization. It shall be identified, verified and protected from damage and deterioration. In case of any loss or damage to their product, it should be immediately notified to the respective party and records of the same to be maintained. This is normally applicable for items like customer supply drawings and parts which need to be included as part of the production provision. Other examples could be raw materials, components, etc. from supplier stored as consignment stock in the stores of the organization. Now let us discuss the next clause 8.5.4 preservation. This clause requires that the output of production and service provision to be preserved throughout the stages of storage, handling and transportation to ensure the conformity of the products and services. Fitness for purpose to be retained Preservation can also include conditions like temperature, humidity, dust-free environment, rust-proof packaging of products, etc. If it is not applicable for your product or service, then you can ignore this part and clearly justify the same in the scope of the quality management system. Now let us discuss the requirements under Clause 8.5.5 Post-Delivery Activities. Sometimes there is a need to perform activities on the product or service after it has been delivered to the customer. The quantum of these activities depends upon the nature of products and service. The organization need to consider statutory and regulatory requirements, any undesired consequences of the product once in use, the nature of lifetime of its products and services, customer requirements, and customer feedback. These may include conditions such as warranty provisions, maintenance services, after sale services or even recycling and final disposal services at the end of life of the product. Now let us discuss the requirements under class 8.5.6 control of changes. 
as already discussed under class 6.3 planning of changes if it is necessary to change your production and service provision the organization must make these changes in such a way as to ensure that the continued conformity of the products and services is maintained these changes need to be planned and documented to demonstrate that the change was properly authorized and implemented friends i hope you are clear with the requirements of the clauses 8.5.2 8.5.3 8.5.4 8.5.5 .5 and 8.5.6 which fall under the clause 8.5 control of production and service provision so now we will learn about the mandatory documentary requirements that an organization has to maintain while meeting the requirements of the above clauses there are mandatory documentary requirements for maintaining documented information on the above clauses as appropriate for instance where there is a requirement for traceability as per nature of product or industry identification and traceability records to be maintained by the organization also customer supplier property if applicable for the organization the records pertaining to the same must be maintained also under 8.5.6 control of changes records of results of review personal authorizing changes and necessary actions to be retained dear friends we have now come to the conclusion of this training session i hope that all of you must have understood the requirements and concepts that fall under the clauses 8.5.2 to 8.5.6 of iso 9001 2015 see you soon with an exciting new topic till then it's me signing off goodbye and thank you